Good morning, folks. The situation in Greece got scarier for civilians yesterday. Protests turned deadly. Massive fish kill continuing in North Carolina. Weirdest weather. Must be a technical term used by those official experts. Anyway, the UK weather records are getting ridiculous. Not quite as ridiculous, however, as permanent cloud seeding for snow approved in Australia. Past the state parliament. Come on, guys. We can't officially call the area from McMurdo up to New Zealand on watch, along with the Indonesian tectonic breakup zone to the north. The eastern Mediterranean Sea took a number of jolts hitting as high as 5.0, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge taking tremor swarms for the second day in a row as well. Looking at the buoys, the flashing one is only a few inches of movement. Our superstar buoy, as you can see, is red, not feeding data, and if this does not come back by tomorrow, we full-scale spam call the Aussie Meteorological Service in charge of it. Meanwhile, out on the Pacific, a new storm is forming. We'll need about 24 hours to get a good satellite shot. Top story today is the critical frequencies in the F1 layer. Way high yesterday. Looking at the last year, this was the highest reading in almost a full year. And that reading on the left is the highest FOF1 value ever recorded. In case you've forgotten, here is the slow, cumulative, critical over-ionization of our planet as demonstrated by the F1 layer over the last 13 years. Certainly scary to know we went from this to this. Twas not the only space weather issue last night. You see the multi-line resonance took a little break, but is back. Three-day solar wind shows the coronal hole stream and correlating density spike to kick it off on the left. As we leveled off, the inductions appeared to stop, but sustained wind over 500 kilometers per second was too much for the air and ground currents to ignore. They got kicked into existence by the solar plasma streams. The footprint, Earth's magnetic connection to the sun, is near this active region here with the others dispersed. You see that that area top right turning away and in decay. Below that, interesting spot forms but is turning away as well. And we do have this newcomer top left. Everything cresting the limb has been DOA, but maybe this will be different with the apparent magnetic beta class polarity complex and large umbra and canopies stretching far into the corona ready to deliver. Especially with Venus and Mercury set to begin a heliocentric opposition this weekend point of interest for some. We also see that from Venus perspective, Ceres appears to conjoin Jupiter. Meanwhile, Mars was part of that party last week. He now creeps into heliocentric conjunction with Pluto. And of course, turning off the atmosphere, we see Saturn ready to conjoin the sun in a few days. Any flares whatsoever, it's an uptick from yesterday. As you can see, there are more dark coronal holes facing Earth, and those still have two to four days till they hit. Watch to the right of the dark spot, a hydro flare, solar tsunami brushes up the southeast edge of that hole and may have ejected some coronal particles. Let's see what these new active regions can do and let's get ready to inundate the owners of that buoy with questions. Eyes open with no fear at 6 a.m. Eastern time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.